Anybody who's watched my channel for any amount of time knows that I've covered this in depth and I've tried to explain it and I've tried to outline it and nobody seems to care, at least in the mainstream media. They want to go on and on about this nonsense with Comey. Like that guy's days weren't numbered anyway. Yeah, and people that have made the allegation that if Clinton had won, he would have been fired, that, that's true. It's absolutely true. Because they can't have anybody in there. They can't control. That he was ever an independent law enforcement official is just laughable. I'm surprised he lasted this long. I think it was just a matter of Trump having other priorities before he got around to firing the man. And McCabe is interim. There's nothing to be seen there. He's not going to do anything even remotely controversial until they find a permanent replacement. But this is still going on, folks. And there was a little blurb in uh, an article where Trump was talking about how cheap drugs are. And he said they're cheaper than candy bars. Now, anybody who knows anything about business knows that that's how you get something off the market. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, seriously, that's how, when alcohol, when prohibition happened, early part of last century, the price of alcohol skyrocketed. And what happened? Organized crime just gravitated to it. The violence level went through the roof because it was there was so much money to be made in it because the prices were high. You drive down the price of something and nobody can make money selling it. Nobody bothers to... Why would you pay armed guards? Why would you have submarines and planes and large infrastructure organizations in the U.S. to distribute the stuff you can't make any money. He's talking about a buck a pill. This is how you get rid of the problem. You see, if he was really worried about the demand for the drug, you see, the supply side attack on this is just wrong-headed thinking. And if this man is any kind of a businessman like he proposed to be, he would know this. Because when there's a continual, a flat demand for something, when the supply of it goes down, the price of it goes up. When the supply of it goes up, the price of it goes down. That's business 101. And that's, to deal with the demand side of it, you would need, you know, to be there to be a large-scale effort by the federal government, state governments, local governments, to, to deal with the, the treatment aspect of it. And you still have to have people who want to be treated. I mean, it's... Why do you think that the Mexicans aren't bringing marijuana over here anymore? Because it's pretty much legal from in the entire West Coast. It's pretty much legal. Nobody's going to bother investing in it. And because it's illegal, nobody's trying to hide it. And everybody's growing it. And the supply is massive. And the price of it has just gone through the floor. That's why they've had to turn to things like heroin and prescription painkillers. And now the price of that has gone through the floor. And it's actually going to, if left be alone, would is going to be able to talk about the opioid epidemic and all the people dying from opioid or overdoses. That's initially going to be an issue. But once the supply side runs out, when people the uh, people stop selling their prescriptions because they can pay their rent with it, it's going to go away. But he can't have that. See, he just wants to change where the money is going and the price of it. And I made this allegation a long time ago. And I even took the time to make a map. Oh, you know, up here, you know, this is his home base up here in Manhattan. This is Mar-a-Lago down here. Um, and I've made this before. If anybody, private pilot, flies over the state of Florida, especially along the East Coast, you will see an uncountable almost number of private runways that aren't on any, uh, any maps that aren't registered anywhere. And it's because of this, this corridor right here where drugs come in and they come through Florida. And this has largely gone away because of this cheap supply of drugs coming from Mexico over here. Well, Trump's talked about putting up the wall and he's always talked about the drug problem with Mexico and Mexico and the drug problem because it's cheap. Because it's taken his buddies down in the Medellin cartel and almost put them out of business. And I know there's folks out there watching right now, what do you mean his buddies in the Medellin cartel? What do you mean? 
He bought a $90 million hotel in downtown Medellin, Colombia, right as he began his run in the primaries in 2015. Now, with somebody who's supposedly so anti-drug and so anti, you know, illegal, illicit narcotic trade, why would he invest so much money in a country that is the king of it down there? I'll tell you why, because they got rid of the FARC. They got rid of the FARC, stands for Fuerzas Armadas Revolucionarias de Colombia, FARC. And what they did is they were a paramilitary group that pretty much kept the, the druggies, the drug, the big cartels, in check. They were a civilian group, and they were heavily armed and very powerful and very uh, influential. And the government didn't like it because they couldn't control them. Well, they got the they negotiated with the FARC and got them to disarm, and now the cartel is <clears throat> free to operate as it used to. And with this man, Alexander Acosta, Trump's Secretary of Labor, Secretary of Labor, think about that. He was the district attorney for the southern region of Florida, federal attorney, and he's the Secretary of Labor. It doesn't make any sense, but it makes sense when you realize that he put the Cali cartel leaders in prison, which were the direct rivals in Colombia to the Medellin cartel, and I have made the allegation that Trump is the de facto head of the Medellin cartel, since Escobar's gone. And everybody thinks this is all conspiracy stuff, but I tell you what, I'm not the only one thinking about it. This thing with the Russians, it might have more to do with the money that could be made down there. And I think the Russians see this too. I think there's more to this end of it than there is anything else. Forget the election. I mean, that might be part of it. But I think they realize if they know what Trump's been up to back since the 80s and his con connections down there in South Central America, and they knew that if this guy got in power, that it would be the resurgence of the Colombian drug trade. And... They are hip deep in affairs down in Venezuela and Nicaragua, and it's just insane. So, anyway, I know this is not being covered anywhere in the media, but I'm going to keep talking about it. Alexander Acosta, and anybody wants to know what these two little dots are over here to the right that aren't connected, this is Trump's private chateau on an island out there, just east of the uh, Caribbean. And that other little dot right next to it is Jeffrey Epstein's pedophile island. Now I've tried to do this and zoom in just to show you how close pedophile island is to Trump's private island. There you go. You could almost row a boat, folks. So you can talk Pizzagate all you want and all this other nonsense, but here's the truth. Here's the real issue that Trump's private island, Epstein's private island, and Trump's little private chateau are this close together and have been for years. I don't think that is any kind of a coincidence. And when you look at it on a global map, it might as well be the same place. So, anyway, um, if anybody doesn't know what this is, this is a pretty much a compendium of the locations that Donald Trump has secured to maintain his money laundering operations from Russia and Asia so that he can move money and drugs up through the country and maintain a headquarters of control here. So anyway, I hope everyone is uh, doing well. It's uh, summer has arrived here in Florida and with a vengeance and it is 100 degrees about every day now and that's northern Florida. So. Just remember, Business 101, when something gets expensive, a lot of people are going to make money at it. So, we will talk to you next time. Like, share, subscribe.